and welcome to a bonus edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to attempt to do just that and tackle today's Times Cryptic Crossword. This is something that you guys asked us to do more regularly uh, when we when we did one of these videos a couple of Fridays ago. Friday is normally the hardest day of the week for the Times Crossword. I did check the snitch this morning, which is the sort of unofficial rating of how hard the puzzle is. Um, if you just type in Times Crossword Snitch, you can read all about that. But it, it is definitely a harder puzzle than average today. Um, so why don't we just kick off and see how see see what's what? In fact, now let's have a quick look at the stats so we can see whether there's any names that we recognise. Um, the first three names there. I don't know who those people are. I'm deeply skeptical they're real. Aphis99, that's a real time. Andy Fisher. I think Mystigris is real. Tom Stubbs is definitely real at 1028. No sign of Mark there. Has Mark done the puzzle today? Let's have a quick look. We'll scan down. Sometimes people, some quick people, have, have a typo or two. No, not seeing anything. So Mark hasn't done it yet. Um, but anyway, let us kick off and see see what we can see and I will try and talk you through my thought processes such as they are. Um, in fact, I've got the wrong glasses on. Meaning to embrace unique selling point, USP probably, um, leaves one hanging, suspends or sus something like that, isn't it? Meaning to embrace a suspense, sense is a meaning, isn't it? So USP is, is a fairly, I think, well-known abbreviation for a unique selling point. So all we've got to do here is make sure a word for meaning, which is sense, embraces, surrounds USP, and something that leaves one hanging is suspense. Now look, we get loads of starting letters. So small drinks bottles are raised showing Egyptian deity. Hmm. Let me think. Osiris, Ra. <laughs> Uh, I want to say Shiva was that was was she Egyptian? Small drinks bottles are raised. Hmm, I'm not sure. That's a bit bad. Not knowing that. Um, two down. Scruffy types anxiety meeting counselor in broadcast. I am aware that counselor can have an abbreviation which is CR. So scruffy type, anxiety, meeting counsellor. Broadcast can sometimes mean air, A-I-R. If you broadcast a TV show, you air it. Um, so, no, I'm just not getting that, am I? Let's try three down. Mimosa, ultimately. Well, that's the ultimate letter of the word mimosa, I would think. An A is a shrub raised so we've got to raise that so it's going to end in a i think probably then so i the way i'm sort of doing this is backwards i'm very much backwards literally backwards um a ultimately is i s a and then it's going to be the name of a shrub probably a three letter shrub because otherwise this a does no duty in the clue and that's all being, yes, rue is a shrub, isn't it? It's a type of herb, I think. Eura Eurasia. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't even read the end of the clue there, which is a large part of the world. Um, and I actually got the answer purely from the wordplay. Um, so, yeah, it's a down clue. So the word raised can be a reversal. And I don't really know what to say about that other than that's... You know, that's just knowing knowing how to read the clues correctly. That's literally all I've done there. Um, four down. No good. Believe it or not, no good has an abbreviation, which is NG, which is a very strange one. Having formally given agreement, that is undated. Sine D is undated um, in Latin. So it must be this, but I don't know why. No good. Having formally given agreement, signed... Yeah, okay. It's a slightly strange reading, this this clue. I don't think we're using NG for no good here. I think we're just using G for good. And we're saying that if you formally give agreement to something, you sign it. So in the past tense, signed. You remove the G from that, 
signed, S-I-N-E-D, and you add I-E for that is, is it est at the end, to give sine D, which means undated. So not easy, frankly, just not easy. Um, let's try eight across. Oh, actually, maybe this one where we've yeah, let's try this one, 725. So this is almost certainly an E. Delighted, pleased as punch. As a result of well-crafted scenes, applaud hard. Well, well, it looks like, it feels like an anagram of scenes, applaud, and H for hard. Um, pleased as punch i think that is right isn't it have i got the right number of letters there i do 14 okay so it's an anagram pleased as punch and all i had to do there to solve that was to think about the form of this final word so i thought it was going to end sed and read the word delighted and then you know once you once you see the answer it's just justification after that and the word well crafted is is indicating anything that indicates crafting or stirring or movement of uh, things in cryptic clues is almost always indicating an anagram. Um, oh, so now we've got a P in our Egyptian deity, which is not not really helped me, has it? So let's try eleven across. Inherited title I removed from South American country inherited title oh it sounds like there's some strife in the house at the moment i'm sorry if you can hear that um repeatedly appear oh repeatedly appeal to consume second pastry an appeal so a, a, a weird thing that can be appeal in a cryptic crossword is sa for sex appeal um, which is a valid abbreviation. I should, I mean, maybe I should try and justify these to you as we go along. I'm just going to put SA in there and maybe, maybe it won't justify it now. Um, sex appeal. There it is. It's the third thing, believe it or not. SA can be sex appeal. So where, where constructors use appeal, quite often you see SA being involved in the answer, but I haven't got this. Oh, samosa. Yes, I have. Yes. So we've got appeal twice to consume. It's eating mo. Well, we might say, why is mo second? Well, it's because if you say just a mo, you mean just a second. So samosa, which is a type of pastry. Now, five down. So carelessly written. So can be sick, believe it or not, S-I-C from the Latin. <laughs> I mean, as I say this, I'm appreciating how, if you've never done a cryptic crossword clue, you must just think he is speaking gobbledygook. Um, they're not that bad once you, once you get used to them, honestly. So carelessly written, slapdash, no, not slapdash, to revise, play, script, wasting time. Okay, so I don't know the answer to this yet. Something like scrappily, though, might work. Um, but I can see the structure of the clue now. And it's not, it doesn't involve sick. What, what it involves is play, script, and that was sick, S-I-C, not, S, not sick as in S-I-C-K. Um, the word revise here is very often indicating an anagram. We're revising the order of the letters. Not revise as in swat, revise as in change. So play script is 10 letters. We, we only need nine. Uh, but this expression wasting time here is saying to take the T out. T, um, t, t is a valid abbreviation for time. So, and then if we anagram play script, I think we can get scrappily. And if you write scrappily, you would certainly be writing carelessly. So I think that's the answer. Now, I'm, I'm interested in this why here, but let's maybe try six down first. Warhorse, no stallion with new energy. Mustang, no, warhorse. Uh, no stallion. No stallion with new energy. I mean, new and what I'm thinking here is that new can be abbreviated to N, energy can be abbreviated to E. Now, if you thought, if you're new to cryptic crosswords and you think, well, and you thought new could be an anagram indicator, 
great thought. It could be. But because energy also has this abbreviation, I'm thinking that there might be an NE at the end of this. But I don't think I know the word, if, if, that, if that is right. Um, and sometimes people watch these videos and they go, well, you know, you seem to know a lot of words. I suppose I do know a lot of words, but I also don't know a lot of words that appear. Don't think to be good at cryptic crosswords, you have to know, you know, have an encyclopedic vocabulary. Um, they, the puzzles will help you to grow your vocabulary, but often you can get the answer using the word play. Let's try this one. Seven down. Supposed weather forecaster at first. Well, forecaster at first must just be the letter F. That's what I'm thinking, which is odd in this construction, isn't it? Um, skulking indoors. Wow. Supposed weather forecaster at first. Skulking indoors. So what I what I pride myself on when I read cryptic clues is that I can almost always discern how to read the clue. Because remember, a cryptic crossword clue always has, a, well, it always, almost always has a definition, a quick crossword clue at the start or the end of the clue. And then the rest of the clue is wordplay. And normally I can read the clue and instantly determine which side of the clue is the definition. Here, I wouldn't put a big bet on it, actually, that I know which is which. I'm going to try that one instead. Giant operations on transport cut short. Giant cyclops is what I'm thinking of. There's certainly the cyclops was a giant often debate with myself whether the Cyclops' curse, was, which was to know the date of its own death, was actually a curse or a blessing. Um, giant operation. So why is this right? On transport. Cycle would be to transport. Yes, ops. Special ops would be a way of saying special operations. So ops is certainly a valid abbreviation for operations. And then if you transport, a form of transport is, is a bicycle or a cycle, that's been cut short. So cyclops is going to be right there and that gives us lots more starting letters. So secret formula in tablet, this one. Secret formula in tablet, this one. I don't know that. Uh, let's try this one. Graded Charlie. Again, when I see a word like Charlie, I'm interest, instantly thinking of the international radio alphabet, where Charlie is the letter C. So you might see Romeo or Foxtrot or, you know, the Yankee. These are words you need to associate with specific letters. So I think this is going to, I'm immediately thinking, this is a word that means graded. It begins with C. Very behind in speaking. Uh, and it's going to involve a homophone. When we see something like in speaking, it's going to be something that sounds like, when we say it, it could sound like words that mean very behind, like so late or something like that. But when we write them down, they're going to have a different spelling. Graded, checked, hecked, very behind, lagged, graded. Um... I'm not sure. Sorry, don't know it. Sai as father. I'm thinking sire for father. S-I-R-E. Gets round this family piano. Piano will probably be P. Um, Sai as father gets round this family. This family is, is very odd. Very odd expression there. And I don't know that one either. Bobbins. Okay, so let's try that one. Looks like something runner now, doesn't it? One racing on the carriageway is cuckoo. Road runner. I suppose it is. It's just a sort of double definition, isn't it? I think a road runner is a type of bird, presumably a type of cuckoo. And one racing on the carriageway would be a road runner, literally. Um, 
Oh dear. <laughs> this is our uh, small drinks. Bottles are raised. So I think S can be small. And then I'm thinking... Drinks bottles are raised. It sort of suggests we need to revert, reverse a six-letter word for drinks bottles. But the thing about that is that would tend to su suggest it ends with an S, which would give us double S, which I don't like. So perhaps small here is not is not this S. It's the plural of a seven-letter word, which we're reversing. I don't know. Let's see if we can get 11 across. Inherited title. Oh, I've in, I read this one before and didn't really think about it. Inherited title I removed from South American country. Um, inherited lineage or something I removed from South America. I can't see how I can make that work. What about that one? Oh, this is the scruffy scarecrow. Well, that's got CR in it, and it's certainly a scruffy type. Let's put Scarecrow in and see if we can justify it. So anxiety, is that Scare? Meeting counsellor. Ah, no. Right. Anxiety is Care. That's meeting counsellor, CR. And that's all in the middle of a word that means broadcast. And it's not air, it's so. If you sow seeds, you broadcast, you scatter them. Um, so Scarecrow is the answer there. That's going to give us a W and 15 across. Possible appearance of lantern in new jail out of place. Well, that's new jail out of place makes it look like it's an anagram of new jail, especially with this W here. Possible appearance of lantern jaw jawline. Some people are described as having a lantern jaw. So jawline is the answer. And look at that. Although that's a, well, two things I'm thinking here. The first is I'm very unlucky because jawline, despite having a J in it, if we look at the start or the letters, the checking letters we get, we get an A and L and an N, which are not very interesting. The second thing is this J is suspicious to me because some constructors um, consider it a sort of, you know, a nice form of the art of crossword construction to include every letter of the alphabet in their puzzles. Now, if you think about, there are some letters that are very hard to put in puzzles. One of those letters is J. So this unchecked J here is making me suspicious that we need to be looking out for Qs and Zs, which are obviously going to be very difficult letters, especially as Cyclops also has some difficult letters in it. So... Hmm, let's see. 16 down. A Catholic, well, that could be, Catholic can be Roman Catholic, RC. So this would be ARC, if so. A place of business, a large one in the Vatican. A large arch, arch, arch C, holy C, a large... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I think a Catholic place of business. Place of business is a shop, an office. I'm not sure. Let's try that one. One wild criminal. That could be an anagram of one wild. Criminal can be an anagram indicator. Made to be submissive. Uh, laid. No. Low. Low. What are we left with? D I N E if we do low. Um, I think this is I think this is an anagram of one wild. I just can't see what it is. Made to be submissive. Low. Why can't I? Why can't I just see what the anagram is? That's weird. Oh, I, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, let's try 21 across. A case for clothing. Artist's body. Part succeeded. A case for clothing. Artist's body. Part succeeded. 
no idea what that is. So this is a disaster because all of these starting letters I've got in 15 and 18 down, I've not been able to use, 15 and 18 across, I've not been able to use. Let's see if 14 down. Spaces in the ladies, no end healthy. Healthy, wholesome, I'm thinking. Could that, could that really be wholesome? Spaces are holes. So let's try wholesome and see if we can just, yeah, the ladies are women. So yes, okay, spaces are holes. We're putting that in a word for the ladies, women, with no end. So we chop the N off and we get wholesome, which is healthy. And we get another W in the grid. Ref refuses or refuses to accept one is among hills. Refuses to accept. I'm thinking disowns is the answer. And downs. You might have heard, heard of the Surrey Downs, for example. Um, they are hills. So we've got hill. We've got uh, refuses to accept. One is. I think that right. Okay. I think the way we're meant to read this clue. Um is that the definition is actually refuses to accept one uh, because it's sort of it's some it's a body that you refuse to accept isn't it? it's a person you refuse to accept when you disown them and then we put is this is here inside the hills inside the downs to get disowns as the answer right now that's scuppered my new energy theory hasn't it so uh this is then no stallion with new energy. It must be a war horse. Um, oh, why don't I know this word? Marengo or something? Uh, no stallion with new energy. Oh, new energy will be go, won't it? So N go at the end. So this is going to be a stallion is a mare. OK, no stallion, sorry, is a mare, female horse. So it is Marengo. Uh, not a word I know. It must be a war horse. We'll check it at the end. Um, one with a tail to tell. OK, this could be uh, whenever you see something like that. I'm, or I'm thinking Canterbury Tales. Now, the Reeve was one of the Canterbury, ta Canterbury Tales, but that's obviously got five letters one of the tellers of the uh, tales in the Canterbury Tales. I think there was, the, I think there was the Reeves tale. Anyway, now I'm questioning myself. There was the Pardoner's tale, wasn't there? Oh, goodness. Uh, one with a tale to tell is back in this bar. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Well, a bar is a rail, so it's nothing to do with Canterbury Tales. <laughs> it's somebody who tells tales or, to, you know, might be a liar. So if we reverse the word liar, uh, because we're putting it back, we get a word that means bar, as in a rail. So this answer, let's see if we can get it without looking at the clue again. Um, bah, don't know. Oh, this was the weird clue as well. Supposed weather forecaster at first. So, right. So I'm thinking this could be something like... It's Swithin, isn't it? Right. I was thinking it was going to be a word like groundhog because uh, in, in America, I think they released in Punxsutawney Phil, don't they release the groundhog? And the groundhog, if it sees its shadow, that means winter's going to stay or something. But so a supposed weather forecaster is, I think, making it, it's sort of saying in folklore or something like that. So ground, groundhog could have been the answer, but it's not. I think it's swithin, which is a word I don't really know. But, the, but, but I can see from the wordplay, this is likely to be correct. I thought it was going to be the first letter of forecaster, but it's not. It's at first skulking. Well, the first letter of skulking is S. And then if something is indoors, it's within. So swithin, I think, is the answer. Um, and I'm... I'm afraid I'm ignorant about quite what the tale is around that. Hopefully we will be able to check if we finish the puzzle. Um, so where do we look next? We better get some real estate in the bottom of the grid. Let's try this one. A pound off pack with egg and 
pastry. Okay, can you think of the name of a pastry that is four letters? Hopefully, some of you will be saying, I know a pastry, phyllo pastry. And I think that must be right because, and the way I got this, by the way, was I saw with egg. And I know that for some reason in crosswords, because, you know, an egg is a circular thing and it's a circ it's associated with the letter O. Uh, there might be a technical reason for that. Perhaps an egg in cricket is meant to be a zero score or something, but I'm not familiar with it. Um, so anyway, I was I was thinking, could, is there a word that ends in O? And then I saw pastry and then I think phyllo and it's right, but clearly because pound, L is a valid abbreviation for the word pound, as in a pound of weight. Uh, and we, so we take one of the pounds, one of the L's of a word that means pack. Well, a four letter word for pack is fill, chop an L out, add an O for egg, and we get phyllo. So at least that gave us, it gave us absolutely nothing though. I's and O's at the end of, or in those positions aren't helpful. With great intelligence, I pass back the local spirit, the town ghost. With great intelligence, I pass back back the local spirit well i don't know what this is but i think i know how it ends and it terrifies me because i pass back pass is one of these words that comes up in cryptic crosswords all the time and it almost always signifies the word col which is a mountain pass c-o-l now if i take I and pass then and I think of it as I and col and I reverse it I turn it back I can get a word loci which I know as a Latin word meaning positions or places so I think the local spirit here is going to be the something is, is this going to be like spiritus loci or something it's going to be some weird expression so we have to think of a six letter word which means with great intelligence that somehow feels Latin. Oh, this is... Uh, great intelligence. With great intelligence. Um, no, I don't, just don't know this. And so we're going to have, we're really going to have to work for our, work for our beans today. 12 down. Arm supporting baby that regularly signals distress. Uh, arm. Could that be something like a, a, a type of arm? Might be a weapon, as in a gun. Supporting baby. Baby that regularly. Mm. You see, words like regularly and crossword clue can, clues can mean take the regular letters out of an answer. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading a WhatsApp message. That's fine. Um, this letter, what letter's that as well? Supporting baby that regularly signals distress. Don't know. Let's try this one. Oh, look, this is a two two word answer. Quizzical look, something I. You twice aimed at a little jewel. Tiger eye? Or so, something like that. You twice, I think, is might be saying, ye, we repeat the word ye. Ye is an old word that means you. So quizzical look. Leery eye? Aimed. Quizzical look, you twice, aimed at a little jewel. Beady eye, maybe a bead is a little eye, a little jewel. Okay, so we put ye twice on a word for a little jewel, which I'm claiming is bead, and we get a quizzical look, which is a beady eye. And that look again, we get nothing useful in these checking letters. Let's try twenty down again. Sigh as father, sire. I did think I, I was thinking sire, wasn't I? So what about a word like suspire? Yes, all right, I'm going to go with that. USP again, so we've got suspense up here and suspire down here. Um, this family, we might say us, 
if we're talking about our own family, mightn't we? So us and P surrounding or surrounded by the father, word for father, sire, gives us suspire. And that's reconfirming Loki to me or loci, which is worrying. What's this then? Ginger, ginger. I don't know. Uh, oh, I thought this was an anagram, didn't I? Oh, made to be submissive. Uh, something down then, maybe. Lie down. Oh, so, all right. So I was confused here by the word made because I thought that the answer was going to be a past tense. But actually, what I think it's saying is if we criminalize or anagram one and wild, we can make an expression which means to be submissive, which is just lie down. Okay, again, absolutely, it's very interesting, this puzzle, actually. We've hardly ever, we got a P up here, didn't we, that was a very nice letter, uh, and this W here, but it's quite rare to get a puzzle where the checking letters are really, really not giving us much. Commit to paper, refusal of French flag. Okay, um, if you commit something to paper, you write it down. You might say you pen it, P-E-N. A refusal, refusal of French is saying, what's a word for no in French? Well, it's non, N-O-N. Put those two together, penon, which is a flag. So at least we can do that one. Again, we get absolutely nothing in 16 down. So the archive? Yeah, I like archive for that then. So I was on the right lines. I thought it might begin A-R-C. Place of business, I didn't have a clue, but I think it's saying a hive. You get a hive of activity, don't you? That's a place of business. So, and there's a large archive in the Vatican. I can believe there is. Um, a case of clothing, chest of drawers. There we go. Right. Okay. Good. So I don't know. I don't know why it's this yet, but I'm fairly sure this is going to be right. Uh, artist's body part succeeded. Well the chest of the drawer. So let's not say chest of drawers. If we look at the word drawers, we can say it as drawers. So the chest of the drawer, i.e. the body part, which is the chest of the drawer, the artist, gets S for succeeded at the end. That is a valid abbreviation. And at least we've got this difficult word in and we might get a, a chance with codeine maybe. Oh, yeah, codeine would work. Her name was Codeine. And she was the brightest thing I've ever seen. Uh, secret formula in tablet. Secret formula is code. In is just plain text in. A tablet is a tablet of E, the truck, which sometimes comes up. You get a tab of E, I believe. Um, and then Codeine is a type of tablet. So this one is sort of saying... You know, there's a secret formula um, uh, in codeine. I don't know if that's true, but yeah, that's, that's I'm sure, the answer. So 19 down, graded. Graded. Charlie, very behind in speaking. If you're very behind, you are... You're sort of lagged, aren't you? Clagged, graded. Graded. Oh, and this is, I need this as well. Genius loci? With great intelligence. Is that genius? That would give us gunness, this one, wouldn't it? The local spirit. I'm just thinking, is there, there's, there could well be, you know, if you, uh, a genie is a type of spirit. Aladdin found a genie. So I'm thinking genius might have some connotation with a spirit as opposed to just the normal English meaning which is like an Einstein so genius loci I quite like that so maybe la classed if you grade something you class it why though very behind la oh of course so I, I, I passed this totally correctly and then failed to solve it um, if we say just the end of this word so the the whole word is classed but if we just say the bit without the C, we'd say last. 
And if you're very behind in a race, you are last. So it is a homophone for L-A-S-T, but we spell it slightly differently. Plonk it on the end of the C for Charlie, and we get a word that means graded. And now we're closing in, aren't we? We've got to get this one, which is going to be something gun, I think. Arm supporting minute gun. So, right, I don't know what a minute gun is. I've never heard of it in my life, but I do know that the word minute, if I say it differently, I could say minute. And minute, if something is minute, you might describe it as baby. Uh, as in the size of it is baby, it's minute. So my a minute gun, that probably is something that, you know, goes off every minute or something. I don't know. But that feels right to me. So now, inherited title. Well, it's going to be some sort of dame, I think. Uh... I removed from South American country. Why can't I get this? Uh, unless it's something name, perhaps. I thought it was going to be like the name of a, a title, like Grand Dame, Grand Duke. But now I'm wondering if it's actually surname, which is an in Suriname, of course. Okay, wow. Okay, I was on the wrong lines altogether with that, but eventually my brain clicked into gear. So Suriname, take the I out, and we get a surname, which is an inherited title, so it was nothing to do with dames at all. And now we've got the daft one I don't know the answer to. I, I think I do know this word. I'll have seen it in a crossword before. I've just got to resurrect it from my brain. Small drinks could be sips, couldn't they? Small drinks, bottles are raised. Okay, I'm going to go for Serapis. <laughs> Serapis. Now, does that feel right? It doesn't, to be honest. But the wordplay is very tempting. And let me explain how I've arrived at this. So small drinks, I'm thinking of sips. They bottle, i.e. they contain the word R, and they are the whole thing is then raised upwards. So it's a down close, so if raising means reverse, and I would get Serapis, which could be an Egyptian deity. I'm going to go for that um, and hope that it that I have understood what the constructor's getting at, and I have. So there you go. That's a great example, actually, of how, you know, I had a little bit of knowledge, not nearly enough to do the puzzle, you know, sort of without the help of the wordplay. Without the help of the wordplay, I could not have finished this puzzle. I would never have guessed at Serap, Serapis here. I just wouldn't. Um, because I don't know it and it looks ridiculous. But let's go, let's go over here now and see if we can. So this is the dictionary. Now I don't know if the dictionary will justify Serapi. Oh, there it does. Good. A god of the Greeks of a god of the Greeks of Egypt, identified with Apis and Osiris. Well, there you go. I mean, that is not something I know. It has two alternative spellings, but we are we alighted on the correct one. Um, now, there was a few things. Marengo, that's, what do we want that to be? A war horse, didn't we? Marengo. Oh. What? <laughs> that doesn't, oh. Oh, well, I, I guess now, now, okay, named in honour of Napoleon's victory at the Battle of Marengo. That does ring a vague bell with me. But, war, why does war horse mean? May, war horse. Why is that Marengo? Maybe Warhorse means something other than what I think it means. Um, an old warrior in any field of conflict. Well, that's not Marengo, which is a place, is it? I don't know. I don't quite understand that. I think there's a, a, an illusion there that I am not grasping, and I will rely on the geniuses in chat to tell me the answers. Now let's see if genius loci does appear uh, as a there. There we go. Literally the spirit of the place. 
a local presiding spirit or deity, the distinctive atmosphere of the place. So again, my ignorance is on display for you all to laugh at, but I did manage to solve the clue, even though I was um, I was laid low by my ignorance. Um, what else did we want to? Oh, Swithin. That was an interesting one, wasn't it? I didn't understand that either. Swithin is not here. So Swithin is going to be a proper noun. Um, which, okay, is going to be harder for me to, to find the answer to. Let's try and see if we can. Right, hopefully you can see that. I have to resort to the internet for this one. But here is Swithin on Wikipedia, which can be spelt Swithin. I have, uh, have heard of St. Swithin's Day before. Um, but look, it says, according to tradition, if it rains on St. Swithin's Bridge in Winchester on his feast day, which is the 15th of July, it will continue for 40 days. <laughs> so that is fairly recherche knowledge, I would argue. Um, maybe that is more familiar to, to you guys in the watching this than it was to me. But that is what's going on there. Um, let me see if there was anything else that I really wanted to draw attention to. I'm just scanning the clues and the and the answers that we've put in. Cyclops. No, we were happy with Cyclops, weren't we? BDI. I think we, I don't think we need to justify BDI. Was there? I had a feeling there was an, a few abbreviations. I was going to sort of counsellor for CR. Shall I just show you that? Because some of you will be saying that's nonsense. Uh, there you go. CR counsellor. Um, broadcast for so. I think that's fairly clear. Mimosa, the Eurasia. We, we understood that. Oh, some of you might be saying no good can't be NG, can it? There you go. NG, no good. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Oh, let's have a look at Minute Gun, because I didn't know what that was. A Minute... Uh, it must be there somewhere. Minute Gun, there we go. A gun discharged every minute as a signal of distress or mourning. Well, there we are. Uh, Wholesome, we understood. Archive, we understood. Codeine, we understood. And Suspire, we understood. Um, so, there you go. I hope that was interesting. Something a little bit different on the channel. Um, but, uh, yeah, if anything, I think that demonstrated the power of wordplay today and the ignorance of Simon in some areas. Make of that what you will. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy these videos, especially on the crosswords, because we're never sure how often we should be doing them. And um, I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with a Sudoku edition of Cracking the Cryptic.